Ewing High School sophomore Eugene Gardkowski was a total mess. This kid from school, Eugene, couldn't remember the difference between Joe's and the Pussycats and Puff Daddy, but Eugene was a god for 10 minutes when he trounced the West Windsor Plainsboro High School varsity bowling team. What, um, what, what, um, what made him so good? Was it his perfect form? No, his form was as wrong as his fashion sense. He was the Ornette Coleman of bowling. Every meet was an improv solo and every meet was brilliant. He would toss that ball behind his back, from his leg side, on junking from left to right, launching out of his chest like a shot put backwards, and even throwing it overhand until he got kicked out of the alley at that time. So he was like, he was like the Picasso of bowling. No! He was the Kandinsky of bowling. There was shape, there was fluidity, there was motion, there was nothing discernibly human about it. And that artful monstrosity took them all the way to state finals that year. And given the abominable failure that was the Ewing High School football team, soccer team, basketball team, baseball team, ice hockey team, the whole school poured out to witness triumph. And strike after strike after epileptic freeform strike, Eugene Markowski delivered. So much so that Larry Charles, star of the Pattersonville High School varsity bowling team, wept in defeat like the little wuss we all knew he was. Wow by a display of confidence heretofore unimagined in the inept behemoth that was Eugene Garkowski, early American history teacher Mr. Sherman asked, Eugene, where'd you learn to bowl like that? I bowl for my people! Eugene said, the door was finally open. Addressing not only Mr. Sherman, but the entire school behind him, Eugene began, I bowl! For every nerd, for every dork, for every fat girl, for every pizza face, brace face, coke on four eyes, for every kid in special ed, and every kid called special ed, for everyone who's ever had their drawers dropped down to their ankles or yanked up to their ears, for every wedgie, noogie, Indian bird, redneck, slapped in the face and beat down, for everyone who's ever had sand kicked in their face in a landlocked state, for every Asian kid who suffered data impressions after the release of the Goonies, for every skinny Indian boy who's adored fluctuating high to low tone gibberish we call Gandhi, for the only black kid in Juneau High School, Alaska, for every teen faggot, gay or straight, for every closet Magic the Gathering player, for the last kid to go pubic hair, and the first kid to go back hair. I bowl for the absence of lunch money everywhere. Now, somewhere between the reference to the Goonies and the whiteness of Alaska, Brett Matthews, beautiful, starting forward of the varsity soccer team, had pulled Eugene's mustard stained sweatpants and tidy whities down to his green and maroon bowling shoes, and still Eugene stood strong. A defiant Moses loudly parting a red sea of pure laughter, naked, fat, pasty, bellowing, and proud.